In this video, we will explore several different techniques for improving the automatic quad wrap as well as repairing the scanned mesh before quad wrapping. How you proceed will depend on how much detail you wish to retain. While the quality of the scan can directly affect the retopologizing process, the subject matter itself may create the challenges, as with this fox skull. A quick visual inspection shows a few potential problem areas. Narrow gaps could be bridged if the faces are too big. The pointy teeth tips may not be covered for the same reason. And thin areas may allow the faces to drop down to the other side as well. Let's go ahead and add a quad wrap at 2% size. Two percent is too coarse to define the basic shape of the surface. One percent is not quite enough, so let's use 0.75. At this size, the mesh appears well covered with only a few open edges. This is a good time to assess the mesh for multiple bodies. Switch Selection to Select Element and hover the mesh. In this case, there are clearly two bodies. For speed optimization, especially when adding other SOLIDWORKS features to the tree, the conversion type is set to Power Body. Because Power Body does not support multiple bodies, you will need to change the conversion type to Power Feature. Now you can use Quad Fill to repair simple holes. Many are clearly visible with their light green edges. You may need to delete a face or two before filling. At some point, however, you will need to use Isolate Open Edges to see the remainder. Note that the reference mesh remains visible around each area to provide context. Select an edge or face to make zooming and orbiting the viewport on the target area easier. This is usually the point where you will want to decide whether to go ahead and repair the quad wrap or to go back and repair the scanned mesh to provide a better quad wrap in the first place. Let's go with the quad wrap for now. Once again, you can address the easy areas first. The quad fill does not create geometry that is constrained to the reference mesh, so the resulting fill is generally well behaved. As you repair the holes, you can also press Isolate Open Edges to maintain a cleaner workspace. If faces have dropped through and attached to the other side, you will have to delete them until each side can be filled independently. By default, Power Surfacing uses a graphics-based pushback so you can always see the sub-D faces as you retopologize the reference mesh. At the bottom of the control panel, you can turn off the pushback entirely, or just adjust it to give you a less confusing view. In this mesh, there are a lot of very small tunnels and interior peninsulas. If you want them included, you will want to requad wrap at a smaller face size. Pressing quad wrap again will automatically clear the current wrap. A good workflow to deal with them is to delete the connecting faces on either end, then switch to Select Element to easily select the remainder for deleting. If you opt to bypass the tiny details, you may find it easier to delete more geometry before using quad wrap. When all holes have been repaired, Isolate Open Edges will unhide both the reference mesh and the sub-D quad wrap. This is a good time to inspect the teeth to see if more geometry will help capture the pointy ends. With most, you will see a flat cap a little ways back from the end. Logically, you would think that a simple extrude would be the answer but extruded geometry is not automatically constrained. So the best workflow for improving pointy areas is to delete the end face or faces, switch to screen coordinate space, flatten the edges using scale, and then, while holding the A key, use extend to build new faces that are constrained to the actual topology as you pull. And finally, use fill again to close the hole. This tooth looks good on this side, but has too many edges on the other, 
where five-sided faces were created, you can erase them to improve the geometry as they taper toward the point. If the fill will create more than one quad, use Smart Fill. Its geometry is automatically set to constrained. In this scenario, the reference mesh was cleaned up before the quad wrap was used. The advantage is that you may retopologize the mesh at different settings without having to perform the same time-intensive cleanup on each version. Cleaning the reference mesh before a quad wrap is the recommended procedure. At 0.75, there are no open edges to repair, so all that remains is to address the pointy teeth. Let's load up the original reference mesh and take a look at the cleanup procedure. Having quad wrapped once and discovered where most of the problem areas are, you can enter Edit Mesh Mode and select the areas one or more at a time. An obvious problem in this mesh is some bridges between the teeth. This time, if the fill is too flat, you may want to use Curve Selected before using Relax. Be careful to leave enough gap to avoid bridging in the quad wrap, or plan on using smaller face sizes. Accept the face edit and select another area to repair. In most cases, you will probably want to hide the reference mesh. For the drop through area, close inspection reveals the problem. Micro tunnels. Painting the area selects the faces on both sides. Enter face edit mode and hide the rest of the reference mesh. Now you are once again working on a sub D and can use any of the usual power surfacing tools. We can delete the connectors and quad fill the resulting holes. In this case, merge verts is also a good option. This time, let's address the microtunnels and peninsulas in the upper jaw area. Careful selection will make it easier to target. A quick way to select the faces is to paint select a small area and expand the selection. Delete and quad fill. To improve the repair, relax is a good final step. After the repair from either Edit Reference Mesh or Edit Power Feature, you can and should save the repaired reference mesh through Tools, Power Surfacing, Save, Save Reference Mesh as OBJ or STL. Let's look at a few other power surfacing tools that may be useful in repairing the quad wrapped sub D. I'm turning off edge visibility and using transparency for this operation. If the reference mesh has large areas that you do not want to snap to, you can delete them and replace them with quad fill. Make sure the fill edge is on the flattest area you can find. Quad fill is affected by curvature. Now we can delete the outline, the center, and then quad fill. If you find an area on the scanned mesh that has a razor edge that does not wrap well, You can delete the faces on both sides of the edge, making sure you leave enough room to solve the connection. Use Paint Face to define the edge. Then use Quad Fill or Smart Fill and tweak to finish.